Welcome back to another episode of Quarantine Talks. Myself, Mayo Crodry, Stockish Time TV. Today, I've got someone that I've known for a while. Probably one of the strongest footballers I've ever met. <laughs> this is someone that they nicknamed in drug bar back when he was like 12. Yeah, yeah. When you were 12, you are probably like, like a fully sized, like grown man. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Hair, hair. <laughs> but got late in Orient forward, James Alabi with me. How you doing, bro? You good? Yeah, I'm not too bad. You? Yeah, not bad, not bad. So, quarantine talks. The first question I usually ask everyone is, what's your diet saying at the moment? Um, my diet is even more strict now because of my, um, my body build. Yeah. I can, I can put on weight easily. So, yeah. um, my diet is, is more strict now and on top of that as well i'm not the best of cooks so I just yeah i'll just cook easy stuff like i put like salmon in the oven yeah. or I cook like chicken fajitas just the easy stuff so i'm not going to go too complicated so no it's it's it's, it's good no nah, i hear you still because on that like i mentioned before when you were in academies and whatnot you were always kind of champion and known for having like a really good physique like, how are you coping without gym, et cetera, at the moment? Because obviously there's more to your game. You're a really good footballer, of course. You've played for some good clubs. Academy level, you did sit. But, like, you are known for being this kind of beast of a person. So how are you coping without gym at the moment? Um, no, it's... it's, it's I, I can tell you a funny story, actually. Um, when I was at Stoke, at Academy... Um, I'm naturally big already, so I, I used to go to the gym a lot. But then one day, Tony Pulis came into the gym and saw that I was already big. And he went to like the, the physios and the, and the coach at the time and said, oh, listen, Alabe, never in the gym again, never. So then since then, I've never really been in the gym. The only thing I do in the gym is like body weights, um, core. So really and truly, this period is not too hard for me because I can still do the certain things that I used to do in the gym anyway. Like so, body weights, um, I could do core, and keeping in shape. The main thing for me is like I have to go outside and and do a run. I know like what's been going on right now, and like everyone's been doing the five k runs, so I do that. And then sometimes I do like shuttle runs. Like I've got like a program where I just keep to every day and go to the park near mine, and and do my my workout. So. That's the that's the way I keep myself in shape. Um, uh, I keep going. And because obviously you're not with the boys at the moment, but mm -hmm. I know that you've been part of this little group working out and stuff. I know Medi's been involved in it. I heard, I'm hearing, mm -hmm. I'm hearing rumors that Medi is puking on that. What's what's all this about? <laughs> <laughs> now Medi Medi's good. He came he came in um, the first day and. Obviously, anyone, any new person that joins in, because we've been doing this for like two weeks now. So, so, so who's in there? I know, I know Deji's in there. Deji's at Charlton. Deji's in there. Yeah, Deji at Charlton. Um, Mehdi. Um, Femi at Boreham Wood. Yeah. Um, Mustafa Karayol at um, the Turkish Club. Yeah. Um, Manny Parry, Jamal Firefield at Boreham Wood. Yeah, so there's about, I'll say there's about six. With strong guys. Eight. Say again? Couple strong guys in there. And the worst thing, how we do it is everyone picks an exercise each. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you have to pick. We go around five times. Yeah. So it's one after the other, just going, going, going. And what happens with us is everyone starts competing with each other. Like, okay, cool. I've got a harder exercise than you. Okay, yeah. I can do something. Hard. And then it just becomes a, a, a tough task. So, no, Medi's Medi's good. But then what he'll do is he'll cut off. And then he'll text message us the next day saying, "Oh, my battery died. My battery, died. <laughs> my battery died." Oh, but no, nah, he's good. He's good. What's your what's your go-to exercise in that thing though? Because Medi was um, saying that he does some Congolese push-up five second. Stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know what it is? I I I like the burpees, but then Yeesh. what I normally do is I take it back old school and do the Nigerian punishment that my mum and dad used to make what me do. Then? Huh? What? Pick a pen. You have to pick the pen yeah, on the floor. So, yeah, you've got to put the thing on the floor. You've got to hold it. <laughs> and then it's funny because like people from different um, cultures, like Jamal, he's from Jamaica and he's like, 
Jamaican yeah, yeah. but like all the other Nigerians they know what I'm talking about because yeah. they've all done it before so right. even Medi is like huh what's this so I yeah I, I, I take it for when you're young, you're thinking like, this is just a mazzalee, mum's got me doing the mad yeah. You don't know that your hamstring is becoming- Yeah, 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 yeah. It made, it made me the beast that I am. Um, we'll talk, <laughs> we'll talk. But speaking on everything now, um, what's, what would you say has been the hardest part of quarantine? Because I know, obviously, like I mentioned at the top, late in Orient, um, got promoted with um, this season, just recently, went out um, on loan, right? Yeah. Um, feeding your way in. And then now we've been hit with quarantine. What's been the hardest part for you of this whole situation? Um, the hardest part is just not knowing how long it's going to last. You know, like you get a, if we had a date where we said, okay, cool, everything is going to go back to normal, mm -hmm. then you can kind of work towards that day and say, okay, cool, there's still light at the end of the tunnel. Don't get me wrong, this is, this is going to end, uh, mm -hmm. God willing, but it's just a case of not knowing what's next and Another thing that's annoying is just repetition of not doing anything. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not... With football, we, we have to stay inside anyway, like, because when we finish training, we can't really do much anyway. But in terms of everyone just inside, not seeing, like, going to the shop and no one's there, and it's just... That's, that's the most frustrating part for me. Yeah, yeah. You know when you said um, foot, being a footballer, you have to be inside. What do you mean by that in terms of you can't be seen places or... Yeah, no, I just, you, you can't just have like a, not say a normal life, but you can't do what the normal public do, as in mm. go and, let's say you want to go and go to your friend's house and stay there late, or yeah. you want to go out and, and have a few drinks with your friends, and you can't, it's, it's restricted, you're, you've got a lifestyle now that you have to keep to, so I feel like now the whole world is, 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 like witnessing it, it's it's more like they're understanding what we go through as well now. Because yeah. we go football, come home. We go football, come home. So it's just repetition. Whereas now everyone's doing it and everyone's all like, oh, this is too much. So, yeah. yeah. Nah, I hear you. And with the, the the loan, like, obviously, I think it was like five parents says, you've got you getting back into the goals. And that was a situation where they were probably looking at to you because they're in a situation where they wanted to stay up. Yeah. And with now, in terms of whether the league's coming back or not, personally, how do you feel? Because you've got a situation where, at the end of that, you're going back to Leighton. Like, mm -hmm. Whereas some of these boys, they don't know what their situation is with, with the team. Um, what's it like in that camp at the moment? Are they still kind of thinking, OK, what, we're, let's everyone keep fit. We're going to come back in. We're going to really make sure we stay up. Or what's going on with, with those boys at the moment? Um... I think it's just an uncertainty with the whole football industry at the moment because you've got so many scenarios. You've got scenarios that, okay, listen, players need to come back and try and stay up. Players need to come back and maybe get a club. Players need to come back and sort out negotiations with contracts because contracts are running out. So it's literally all up in the air at the moment. I feel like um, there's no right or wrong answers. And that's why I say this is, this is the most frustrating thing is not knowing what's next because there's so many questions that needs to be asked. There's so many um, things that need to be done with the football and um, no one knows. So it's just some uncertainty for, for everyone. But like I say, like even when I speak to some of the boys that have uncertainty with what's going to happen next, is I, I just make sure I tell them that, listen, try and focus your mind on other things that are yeah, you can do in your life so you can like not think about the the, the uncomfortability mm -hmm. so it's just there's no right or wrong answer obviously as much as you want to tell, tell someone listen don't worry and whatnot they're still going to worry they're still going to think about it in the back of their head so i think everyone's just got to do the best that they can individually do you reckon that if the season does come back that yourself and a lot of the players will be ready to play games because that's another thing right it's one thing to remain physically fit but mm -hmm. football is not a game where you can just kind of all right cool let's let's go for it do you reckon that yourself you'll be ready to go back in straight away or yeah no I, I feel like for me I'm just going to treat it like a like a pre-season like we're just going to come back um start firing again and start going but obviously with football it doesn't always work like that I can come back and I can start slow I can start not the best but at the end of the day, this is what football is. And we just have to adapt with the situations that we're in. 
like other players, I'm, I'm speaking on myself, but other players, they might come back in and they're banging off straight away, doing their thing. Other players, it might take a while for them to get back into the swing of things. So it's just a bit of ifs and buts. But for me, I, I'm always the person that I try and adapt to any situation that I'm in. So if we have to come back and we have to work hard to get back to where we, want, we have to get to, then I'm all for it. In terms of like, let's go back, back day now, because I mean, you're in a situation now where you're adored by the fans, you're doing really well, you turn things around. Because I know at one point, after the whole thing, you transfer listed and next, you know, it's like, you know, we're keeping him, like he's, he's doing his thing. So you've, you've seen dark days in football and turn it around. But mm-hmm. if we take it back now, one of the key things I remember is you were one of the first people I knew that just completely, like everyone was going to clubs, but you yeah. completely just left and went quick. You, you went far. It was like, what? Yeah. It was like, what, what's that like? Like, what's that experience like going into that, going in, well, going to Stoke for the first time? What was that like as a boy from South London? Um, it, it, was, it, was, it was mad because what's, but what's so sweet about that story is I was at Millwall before that. Yeah, and um, Mill offered me a. I went on trial. I was I was playing for you, your your school teacher, um, yeah. Mr. Matt. Yeah. So we played a school match and against St. Thomas, and I remember it was at Southwark Park, and the game was four four or five five or something like that, mm. and I scored all five goals. Mm. Now Mr. Matt was the the ref. But yeah. he was also at Millwall at the time. Yeah. And I was getting mad at him at, at the, in, the, in the game because yeah. I felt like I should have had a penalty to win the game. He didn't give it to me. Then what was so crazy, after we had the argument, Mr. Mapp said to me, OK, you know what? I'm taking you to Millwall um, on Monday. So I went to Millwall on Monday. Um, we, I trained with my, with my friend called, obviously, you know, Richmond. Yeah. Um, I trained with Richmond and I couldn't believe that I was at academy. Yeah. So that's when it sunk in. Then the next day, I mean, the Saturday, we had a game against Southampton, scored a couple of goals there, then I got signed. But they were offering me a four year contract, like a two year scholar and a two year pro, or something like that. Yeah. But Millwall went into um, administration so they were going to be there wasn't going to be academy no more they were going to be what's it center of excellence center of excellence right yes yeah, different terms right yeah. different terms so a lot of the boys at the time Aaron Tishabola um me um Barney Richmond Joe there was a few of us we 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 started to think okay you know what um me and myself, I felt like I'm, I, I was better for, better than Centre of Excellence. I wanted to get the best education I could get, so yeah. I need to go to an academy. And I went on trial to Arsenal, Chelsea, um, didn't get in, went to Tottenham, and Tottenham wanted to sign me, um, but they were taking long. So Stoke came in and said, listen, come up, we'll sign you straight away. So I went up to Stoke the first time, and back to your question, at that moment, that's when I realised that, okay, yeah, I'm actually going to become a footballer because this is the lifestyle that I want. I want to be a way to focus, to, to try and make it work hard and do my best. So when that, when that moment came and Stoke offered me the contract and whatnot, that's when I knew that the, the, the feeling was crazy and this is what I wanted to do. So, yeah, I feel like when I was young... Um, it was it was it was it was a crazy feeling. It was a big feeling for for me and my family and my friends. Mm, but it's because, like you said, you had options that are kind of more familiar, and that's not the end of that story because you've gone Stoke and then you've gone Celtic, which is even mad. It's like you've gone even yeah. further. It's like like what is the mindset that's taking you in those directions? Don't get me wrong. Like Stoke at the time were Premier League, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Brendan Celtic, big club, but not a lot of man at that time were willing to take those sort of risks it's getting come from. A lot of people have stayed at the mill because it's familiar territory. You know what you're getting. What was what was it that drove you to kind of make that decision that you said that, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really, even if I need to go that far, I'm going to go for it. Do, do, do you know what it is? I felt like the Stoke situation, 
um, epitomizes my career because I have gone to a lot of places that are far from home. But what made me go was obviously I knew there wasn't anything for me in the in the area that I grew up. Um, I started getting into situations that wasn't needed um, at the time, and I could feel myself going a certain way because how I grew up, I always wanted to be the bad boy. I always wanted to be the next boy that could be a gangster and whatnot. But I knew that things around me that were happening would, would kind of happen to me, like people going to jail, people getting killed. I knew that that would be my next step if I carry on thinking I could, I could be like that. So the, the Stoke situation was, at first it was for me to just go away from home. I don't want to be around the area that I'm in. But then when I was there and I said, okay, wow, this is like, I can go to different heights of this. Like, yeah. This feels good. I'm in a different area. I can embrace different cultures. I can in, like understand being um, independent. I can be responsible for things that I have to do. And it shaped who I am today, really, because I left home at 15. Um, Straight into dig. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. No one, no one um, my age was doing that, leaving to go far places to, to go and play football. So it, it helped because uh, it made me grow as a person. So that's why when the, the Celtic move came along, I wasn't scared to, to do it. And especially like what happened with the Celtic move was I went to view the place first. So I went to view the stadium, went to view... <clears throat> Um, the training ground and everything so that's when I knew that okay cool yeah because uh, like Celtic is like the main United of, of Scotland so it's like it's like me going to look at Old Trafford and yeah, I'm yeah. Gonna, you know I don't want to sign here so yeah no, I hear that because I think was it Travis that went Celtic at one point as well who? Travis Travis um, I've got any surname but that, there's only two people I know well I know a couple people that from London Travis, that was at, um, Chelsea yeah Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's like, and it's, when you think about it, it's like, what, man are leaving South East to go and play in Scotland. It's like, when you think about it, it's just crazy. But I mean, yeah. more power to you guys, man. You mentioned that you played for a lot of clubs, though, and this is where it's, it's interesting for me. I mean, because you've had different luck and different spells, right? You've had your yeah. chest spell, which was kind of, for me, that was the, the beginning of you, I'd say, in terms of the goals were there, people were realising that, you know what, this guy's got a lot to his game. He just needs a team that caters to him. Because I'm pretty sure in the first season, you started off all right. Second yeah. season, they really played to your strengths. Yeah, yeah. Had spells where kind of teams were not necessarily played to your strengths. Going into uh, another season now where you're at a good club, I mean, you're doing well. What is the main focus for you now? Because you've, I would say that you've established yourself at that level. Now you're playing at a level higher. What, what do you want to push on to do now? Yeah, I think, I think the main thing for me is, like you said, um, I played at a, a good level with, with Stoke and Selwick and whatnot. Um, and then with how football has gone, I've dipped in the level that I've played at. The, the main thing for me is just getting the consistency because with my career, I feel like I've had spells where I've been good there, they're not so good there then good there, then not so good there. And the thing is, a lot of managers and teams, they, they know about me, but they also know things that I haven't done well. So it's like, I need to get to a stage where I'm consistent with the, the good form that I'm in, which will hopefully drive me to playing at higher levels because I'm not, I'm not um, content with where the level I'm playing at. Um, I believe, I strongly, strongly believe that I can be playing at a high level. Um, but it's just all down to me and all down to me getting the opportunity to, to show that week in, week out. Why do you think the consistency hasn't been there? I know it's probably difficult when you're playing for different clubs and you're, you're moving about, but what do you think has been one of the main reasons why it's been difficult? Because again, that, that Chester patch, if, there, if anyone was to look at you, they'll be like, this is like a totally different player, you get me? Mm -hmm. like, what, what clicked well there? What, what was the main thing that clicked there that didn't kind of follow you elsewhere? Do you know what clicked at Chester for me was the manager at the time, John McCarthy and I can't remember who he took over, but the first man, Steve Burr. Yeah. 
Mm. Um, I was at Ipswich at the time. Yeah. And Mick McCarthy said to me, listen, you can play, you can play in the championship. You can play in League One. You can play in, in, in these levels. But you need to prove yourself at a lower level so you can play week, off, week in, week out. So I, I took that comment on the chin and said, yeah, okay, cool. I'll do that. So literally, I said to him, okay, I'm, I'll leave today um, and I'll go and play at a lower level. So I went to Chester and the first thing the manager said to me was, uh, I can't believe that we signed you. I can't believe that you're here. Um, it's a privilege to, to be working with someone with you. At that moment in time, I've already installed confidence. Mm. At that moment in time, it's a, I'm like, it's a different thing. It's like, what? Ah, cool. <laughs> cool. All right, cool. You see me? I'm the best player here. <laughs> nah, so, exactly. so, so I'm yeah, the best player. Cool. So cool. Okay, cool. I'm here. So, <laughs> so obviously, when that happened, I just had so much confidence in how I was playing. If I missed, if I didn't score, if I didn't control the ball right, I just knew that I'm going to come good. Yeah. And the main thing why I had the consistency was because that manager had so much belief in me. Mm. He said, no matter what, if you miss, if you, if, you, if you don't score, if you don't play well, you're going to play because I have the belief in you that you're going to come good. Mm. Now, this is the thing. Every manager can't give you that. Yeah. No man, every manager can't say, listen, whatever you do, because it's a results business. They're not going to say to you, listen, if you, if you don't play well, um, you're not going to play. If you don't play. But my thing is, where it hasn't gone well is because managers don't have the patience. Mm. And that is understandable because I've gone to clubs where we're trying to get promoted. So they don't have time to have patience for someone that's not doing well at this yeah. time. They need, they need the results. Mm. Um, so... I feel like for me, with how my career has gone is maybe two games, I haven't played to the best standard that they think. Yeah. Then they're like, okay, you know what, James? Yeah, that's it. Okay, and, and another team I might go to, I might have two great games, then I might have one bad game. They'll say, okay, you know what, James? Again. Do you, think that's that your, that, do you think that your reputation and your standard is sometimes a blessing and a curse because like you said you've you've been with Tony Pulis you've been up to Celtic you've been with Nick McCarthy so when I'm, I'm guessing when managers see you and again you're joining clubs where especially with the way football is it's kind of do or die if these teams don't make that space that's it the manager's out the whole 11's out the chairman's mm -hmm. out so they're probably looking they're thinking bloody hell James like listen this is like where's like this is Celtic still is, do you reckon that's a big factor in why even if you're performing at 80%, they're thinking, you know what, this is not what I'm seeing. That, Or do you just reckon that it's just a harsh reality of when you're playing with those sort of teams that if one person's not at it for a game, they just bring someone else in? Yeah, I think, I think it's a bit of both. Like, you can say that the first bit, but I think it's more so the harsh reality of, listen, if, if you're not doing it, they're just going to bring someone else in. That's just how it is. You have to be playing at a level that they want you to. And then, if not, they're going to, they're going to take you out. But at the same time, it's a, I believe it's a game of opinions. Certain yeah. managers think you're not doing what you're meant to be doing. But you as a player, you have to start taking responsibility and saying that I believe I'm doing what I'm doing. So, yeah. it's a game of opinions and you can, you can, you can put it at both points. Yeah. Um, another thing that's crazy as well is if you think of the amount of ballers that kind of had similar situations for you that are now playing in, in the league and then you hear a lot of people say kind of like, oh, well, League Two football's not all that and whatnot. What's your opinion on that? Because I've seen like top ballers, top, top, top ballers in those leagues. I've seen top ballers in National League and it's like, you can't just say, for me anyway, you can't just say, that these levels are just long ball. Because if you see some of the footballers that are playing in these leagues, it's, it's completely different. But what's your opinion on that? Because like, I feel so like it's, a, it's, it's, it's arrogance, really, because, like I said, I've, I've played at uh, League Two, National League, uh, League One. And there are real-life footballers in these leagues. Mm. There's people that can 
look a million dollars if they were playing higher. Um, and they're literally making the level that they're playing at baby food. Like I remember playing for a screen in the National League when I was at Chester. And this is no word of lie. I've played against Barca B, yeah, when I was at Celtic in the, in the, in the Youth Champions League. Mm. Adama Traore was playing. Um, I can't remember who. There was some other big names playing. And we played them at um, Camp Nou. Literally, we got, we scored first. Mm. And the rest of the game, they bopped life out of us. Just tick attack, just chasing shadows, chasing shadows, chasing shadows. So I've witnessed that. Now, yeah. when I was, the only other time that I've witnessed that was when I was at Chester. We played against Forest Green in the National League mm. and they were a joke. This was all men. Yeah. Um, Keanu Marsh Brown, I played with him. Um, Ethan Pinnock, that's at um, Brentford. Um, Deutsch, that's at Hibernian. There's a few players. Yeah. They were ticket 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 and you would if you can, if if a spectator came to that game you would not call it a national league game. Mm. No yeah. chance whatsoever. So I feel like it's a it's an arrogance and it's just a, like a stereotype that people haven't come and seen seen the level and and watched the level and taken it in. So it's not it's not true. There's there's a lot of ballers in these leagues and I'm I'm sure within the next few years you'll be seeing a lot of more lower league players jumping levels and, and playing at, at, at high levels mm -hmm. um england c now so you're someone that you've represented you know um not a lot of people know about like england b england c and all that type of stuff but in if we look at it you have represented your country like what what was that experience like who it is, I don't even want to sound like I didn't appreciate it, but my dream is to, is to play for Nigeria. You know um, what? I'm, glad, I'm actually glad you said that. Let's, let's talk about this now. So you, that your dream is to play for Nigeria. Yeah. And what, what's, your thought, what's your thoughts on just playing for Nigeria as a whole? Let, let me leave that as an open question to you. Me, it's... It would be an unbelievable and an emotional feeling because I love, I love my country um, without a shadow of a doubt. And I'm, a quiet, I'm quiet, although I was born here and I speak like I'm from here, but I love the culture. I love being a fob. I love eating our food. I love <laughs> going to Nigerian parties. I love, like you saw me at, you saw me at Joe's oh, wedding. Oh, I was... Oh, <laughs> Oh, yeah. I was I was um, embracing it. So yeah. to put on a shirt and represent Nigeria, especially with how big our country and our culture and our tradition, our tradition is, it would be an amazing feeling. Like I, I grew up watching uh, Martin's Yakub. I was watching um, Yakubi's live yesterday. He was talking about playing for Nigeria um, and going back there to help them. So yeah, it would it'll be an amazing feeling. I think it's every Nigerian should 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 love. If they had the opportunity to play for them and represent them, they, they would love to do it. I don't believe that. I know a lot of Nigerian players that play for, for England and whatnot, but I, don't, I feel like they should understand that playing for Nigeria is not, it's, it's not, it's not a thing that everybody can do with, with how big our country is. So, no, it would be a great thing to achieve. Um, what's the process? So, like, have you had to declare interest that you'd be interested to play if the opportunity comes? Yeah, yeah. Um, when I was at Stoke at the time, what happens is they invite you to a training camp. Yeah. But um, I, I didn't go because at the time Pulis uh, wanted me to travel with the, the first team squad. So, but yeah, I think I've, I've had friends that, that go there. I know that people at Aribo and, and uh, Wobi and that, they, they, they go to camps, um, they contact your club and tell you what to do. And then after that, once you go once, They've obviously got your details and they let you know, okay, cool, this is coming up next and this is coming up next. Because you mentioned Ar you mentioned Ariba and Ariba is uh, he's an international now, right? Shame with the shame you have to do some some similar sort of thing as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So how how far off do you reckon you are? Yeah, I, w- I wouldn't say I wouldn't say I'm close because I feel like with Nigeria the the, the squad has improved a lot. Mm. Um, I feel like if you want to play for Nigeria, you have to be you have to be at a level where they can can take you. So I think like for me, I have to work myself to get to a level where um, is of a higher standard. And that's not just because I want to get picked for Nigeria. That's for, for me personally. I know I can play at a higher level. I can play at a higher standard. So um, for me, I just have to work for myself to get to a higher standard. Then all of that will come with with the level that I'm playing at. So it's not something that I have to look at now and say, listen, I need to do this to, to, get, to get picked for Nigeria. I just need to make sure I'm doing what I can to get a higher level. Then God will take control of the rest. Yeah, fully, man, fully. But for all, thank you so much, man. Um, I'm sure after all of this, we'll catch up properly, man. Yeah, yeah. That's another episode. Make sure you stay locked in.